Hi, I'm Jeff Price. I'm the lead author of the Certified Member Materials for the American Association of Airport Executives. I'm also the lead trainer for the CM program, uh, the CM Academy, the week-long training program to get candidates prepped to take the Certified Member exam. Wanted to take just a couple of minutes. I've been asked to do a video like this for a while. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is move out of the wind, so hopefully we won't, uh, won't be hearing as much of that. So we're going to kind of come to this alcove here. I want to try and give you some ideas for how to study for and how to pass the exam because yeah, I really truly want you to pass this. This is a great industry certification and it's the step on the way to the accredited airport executive. So we want to get you out on the right foot. Uh, the first success strategy, whether you're attending one of the classes or not, is read the material. Uh, that may sound just ridiculous to, to say, but we have found a direct correlation for those that read the material prior to coming to a class. Uh, their pass rates are higher versus the people that just hope we're going to tell them everything during five days, which is impossible to do. There's just too much information and not enough time. Or the folks that might have glanced over a couple of things or try to read it during the week. Uh, not to say that's not been done successfully before. It's just that the percentages are, are, are really against you if you don't read the material ahead of time. Uh, but when you read the material, don't just read it. Read it with perspective. Give yourself a benefit here. Uh, read it with the perspective of, if I had to brief my board on this topic, what would be the key points I would look for out of this material to give them a briefing? Then you can highlight those key points, and that's going to focus your studying uh, much more than just kind of reading through, looking for things that you might randomly believe uh, have some sort of importance. Second, build index cards, build flashcards. Uh, there's plenty of flashcard apps online, or just go old school, and I still love uh, index cards you can buy at the, the office supply store, but build your own flashcards. The way we learned our multiplication tables is the same way you can learn this material. Write your own test questions on the flashcard with the answer on the other side, and then test yourself constantly. Uh, flight school students at uh, Pensacola and Navy flight training uh, did this all the time as a way to rote memorize those procedures. Eventually it becomes uh, part of their memory. Eventually they don't have to think about it, it's, it's just available to them. So writing test questions is one of the best ways you can study far more effective than reading and rereading and rereading. When you read and reread and reread, it's just like driving the same way to work every time. Have you ever driven to work and not realized how you got there? I'm sure that's happened to all of us. And that's just because your brain's on autopilot. It's seen this, this route before, so it sort of checks out. It, it will hopefully be aware of uh, if anything jumps out in front of you, but for the most part, it's just along for the ride. That's what happens when you read material over and over and over. So I'd suggest read it once, read it with some perspective, and then highlight those, those areas. Uh, and then from those areas, you can draw your own flashcard questions. With the flashcards, uh, the apps will do this for you automatically, uh, but you can do it yourself. The questions you don't know that well, make sure you repeat them more frequently. And the questions you know very well, uh, repeat them less frequently or run your cards less frequently. And give yourself a, a couple of days in between running cards if this is something that you're either self-studying or you're doing prior to coming to the class. If you're in the class for the week, uh, you're gonna have to shorten that time schedule. Uh, number three, teach the material to somebody else. So if you're studying with a partner who's also studying for the CM, sit down with them from time to time, and instead of just kind of studying together, which I'm really not sure what that exactly means, test each other. Give each other the briefing, the briefing you would give to your board based on what you read from the material. See if the other person gets the, gets the general idea of it, uh, and have the same done for you. And then you can even trade your flashcards. Uh, a couple other things about the exam, then I'll let you go. First, there's a lot of myths out there about the exam. Uh, here, let me get rid of some of those right now. First, there are no date questions on the exam. We will put the dates with acts or where they're relevant, but you're not gonna get a question as to when something happened. We only put the dates there to provide you some context to, to actually try and help you out. Uh, second, there are no acronyms on this exam. I see a lot of these flashcard apps online and people have been, all, it's a bunch of questions on dates and acronyms. Uh, we haven't tested on date and acronyms for several years now, so, so that stuff's old school. And I guess it's also my time to warn you, be careful when you're downloading index cards or flashcards from other people. One, you're not giving yourself the opportunity to write that information down, and writing the information down increases your retention by 20%. Uh, but two, you don't even know if they're right. It's like buying a used textbook and hoping all their highlights are the same ones that are gonna be on a test. Next up, uh, there's no math on the CM exam. There's no computations. Doesn't mean there's no figures, that, or in terms of numbers, uh, like 10,000 in as a primary commercial service airport. You should know that. 
but we're not going to ask you to compute anything. So when you get to imaginary surfaces in those areas, calm down. You don't need to compute that stuff. The number of questions relate to how the, the length of the material in the module. So to give you an example, um, airport master planning, it is a uh, pretty good sized section. So you're going to get a lot of test questions out of that. Uh, the airport insurance, it goes on for about two pages. You're only going to get one, maybe two questions out of that entire section. So you can judge this for your studying and, and kind of temper that. The areas where they're really long, uh, airport master plans, uh, airport ownership and operation, spend more time in those areas. The areas that are shorter, spend less time. If you are an expert already in a certain area, still go ahead and read that area so that you can compare it to your truth. The module truth is not the world's truth. The world's truth is 5,000 airports, including uh, public use airports, and everybody has their own way of doing things. We obviously can't write the modules to make it fit for how everyone does things. So we go off advisory circulars, FAA orders, regulations. We go off what's written, what's best practice, what's published. Um, ACRP research reports, uh, journals, textbooks, th things like that. So also on the exam, there are only four answers on every multiple choice question. There's no, uh, it doesn't go A, B, C, D, E. It just goes A, B, C, or D. There are no all of the aboves. There are no um, A's and or C's or something like that. Uh, you have four answers that uh, you can select from, and, and that's it. So you select from one of those four. So if nothing else, you have a 25% chance of guessing the question uh, correctly. And uh, that's my list. So if you have questions, I'm always uh, help, happy to help you out with that. Uh, we always get the question uh, when they come to the class, should I just read the workbook and not worry about the modules? No, uh, you need to read the modules. I can't cover everything in the workbook in one week. I can cover the workbook in one week, I'm sorry. I can't cover everything, every single thing in the modules. So make sure you're hitting the modules. Uh, uh, even if you're here during the week doing an academy, make sure at night you're still checking with the modules to see if I didn't cover something or if there's something you had uh, some questions on. Uh, so that's probably my final piece of advice on, on studying for the exam. It's 180 questions, 126 total. Uh, passes it at 70%. Uh, so somebody said the other day, hey, C's get degrees. Uh, so you don't need, to, don't need to nail every single thing here. You just need 70%. And uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. And hopefully this video will help you prepare you for the, the certified member exam. Have a great day.